Hey, I'm Dave with FindYourNextGuitar.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop fret buzz by adjusting your truss rod, as well as how much you should turn the truss rod and then which direction you should turn the truss rod based on which way your guitar neck is bowed. So if you look at this image here, the top position, the neutral position, is how your guitar neck should be normally. This is ideally what you want your guitar neck to look like. It's going to have a slight forward bow to it, which is a very, very subtle U-shaped bow. And what it does is it allows some space around this section of the guitar so that the strings can vibrate freely and that it won't create any fret buzz. Fret buzz on your guitar can occur when the strings are 1 64th of an inch too close to the frets. So this is a very, very small amount, and that's why truss rod adjustments are so difficult to identify. So a quick way that you can identify whether you need a truss rod adjustment or not is you can put a capo on the first fret here and hold down the 16th fret with your finger and then take a business card around the 8th or 9th fret and slide it underneath there. And if the business card is touching, then you've got a backwards bow and you need to adjust your truss rod clockwise. And if the business card isn't touching and there's a really big gap, then you've got a forward bow and you need to adjust your truss rod counterclockwise. So I'm going to describe both of these bows a little bit more and then go into how much you should actually be turning your truss rod. So if you have buzzing near the front of your guitar, near the headstock, in probably like the first four to five frets, and then there is a big gap in the center of your guitar, and then near the 12th fret through the rest of your guitar, you have more buzzing or dead notes, then you're going to have what's called a forward bow. And the reason it's called forward, even though this is U-shaped and it, it you would think that the, the bow is backward, um, it's called forward because the headstock protrudes forward slightly. Uh, so forward bow is a U-shaped bow. You've got buzzing and or dead notes near the first through fifth frets a big gap in the center of your guitar where there's lots of extra space. There's lots of room between the strings and the fretboard and then buzzing and dead notes from the 12th fret through the rest of your guitar. That's going to be a definite forward bow. Now a backward bow is going to be the exact opposite of that. It's when the guitar headstock protrudes backwards slightly, which is why it's called a backwards bow. And it gets tricky because it, it's going to feel like you have a bulge in the center of your guitar. So you may get dead notes and fret buzz across the whole thing. If you just have a very slight backward bow, you're going to get fret buzzing near the 5th through 12th frets, and you're going to get buzzing and dead notes there. But you could also get buzzing and dead notes throughout the entire guitar. Um, the best way to identify if you have a backward bow is to go back to taking a capo and putting it across the first fret and then holding down the 16th fret with your other hand and checking the eighth or ninth fret with a business card. And the reason I say a business card is because a business card is just about 1 64th of an inch in thickness. And if you slide that card in between the frets and it is touching or it can't get underneath the string, then that is a definite backward bow. Now, this brings the issue of which way do you turn it. If you have a backwards bow, you're turning it clockwise, and clockwise as referring to the way an analog clock turns normally. And then if you have a forward bow, you're turning it counterclockwise, which is the opposite way that an analog clock normally turns. The last piece of this is how much do you turn the truss rod? And it really, really depends on the guitar. It depends on whether you have a dual action truss rod, whether you have a single action truss rod, whether you have bottom adjustable truss rod, top adjustable, um, how sensitive your guitar is in general. 
maple necks in general, um, they're, they're going to warp and turn a little bit more. Um, you're, you're going to be adjusting it a lot more than you would other guitars. Um, and the rule of thumb is to start with a quarter turn, but I always say if you're not sure, and especially if you're not 100% sure which direction to turn the, the truss rod, I would say start with like one eighth turn. And when I say an eighth turn, I'm just talking about the Allen wrench, um, one eighth turn of a full rotation. It really depends. You're going to have to play with it and let it sit for a couple minutes and then go back and check it and see if that stopped the buzzing. Some guitars, you could have four or five full rotations to completely get rid of the buzz. Other guitars, um, I, I have a PRS that has a dual action truss rod and it's hypersensitive. One sixteenth of a turn could actually be too much on that guitar. So it, it really depends. It, it's situational based off the guitar. And as you continue to do these adjustments, you'll get more and more familiar with your guitar. And eventually you'll be able to do this with feel without needing to check or measure. So that is it for adjusting your truss rod. So in the next video of the course, I'm going to go a lot more in depth on how much you should be turning your Allen key. Um, and then if you have a bottom adjustable truss rod, how you can adjust that without taking off the neck, as well as some of the little quirks and tricks that you can do, because I'm going to go through actually adjusting my guitar. So you'll see what the process looks like from start to finish on the three different guitars. And then after that, we'll move on to the section of setting the string height, setting the pickup height and adjusting the bridge and setting the intonation if needed. Once you have all of those things done, then your guitar will be completely set up and ready to play. And in each of those sections, I'm going to talk about the positions that you should put them in based on the style of music that you want to play so that it's going to be set up exactly how you want so that it's going to feel great and play great for the style of music that you're trying to play at any given point in time.